Light, the most important energy in existence. It helped create life and every day it illuminates our path forward. Today, we will see how the DJI L1 uses light to calculate distance and sense its surroundings. In 1969, a laser was fired at the moon's surface. The time difference between launch and impact was calculated, multiplied by the speed of the light and halved. By doing this, we were able to measure the distance between the Earth and the moon. This is the DJI L1 LiDAR payload. It emits lasers and combines inertial navigation to obtain point cloud data. This is an aerial surveying camera. Combining the images it collects with the LiDAR point cloud, we see this picture. Combining RTK, 3-axis gimbal and drone, we can not only obtain the distance, color, and the shape of the objects, but also accurately measure their position coordinates. This is the DJI Laser Visible Light Fusion Solution. Topographic survey is the foundation of making maps. So how do we use the L1 to make a topographic map? First, we use the L1 to obtain laser point cloud data of the survey area. The point cloud data has the location information we need, and the topographic map can be created by processing it. For example, once we select a region to collect the data, simply set a few parameters like flight altitude 100 meters, speed 10 meters per second, side overlap 50%, use three returns, repeating scanning mode, then we can start the operation. It's a simple process. Before drones were equipped with slider, the operation process was relatively cumbersome. We needed to set up a base station and manually calibrate the LiDAR. During the operation, data couldn't be monitored in real time and problems often discovered after get back to office. To help solve these issues, DJI designed and developed LiveOx LiDAR, high precision IMU system, and an integrated visible light camera, and combined them to create the L1. The L1 is synchronized with the flight and RTK position of an aircraft in real time. It supports Net RTK or DRTK 2.0 or third party base stations and also supports PPK post processing. During operation, the L1 will automatically perform RMU calibration to improve the accuracy of data. The L1 data can be previewed in real time and watched in split screen. The left side is the visible light camera feed and the right side is real-time point cloud feed. You can also switch the display mode or view the 3D point cloud data. Many also use the DJI P1 photogrammetry sensor to create topographic maps. L1 has four advantages over the P1 when creating topographic maps. First, higher elevation accuracy, LiDAR actively emits lasers for ranging, which has advantages in elevation accuracy. Second, shorter post-processing time. When acquiring high-precision 3D surface information, there is no need for feature point extraction, aerial triangulation, dense matching, and other steps. So the post-processing time is shorter. Third, less affected by texture. For textures like snow, grass, and repeated textures and textures in low light, recreating them using the P1 will sometimes include mistakes. Well, the L1 data is unaffected. Four, strong penetration. Topographic maps are made by removing the ground points of vegetation, buildings, and other surface information. The biggest advantage of the L1 is that the laser emitted by the L1 can penetrate vegetation and obtain the ground information. By having multiple returns, we are able to detect the edge information and structural information of the objects. Capturing with the P1 would require manually updating the ground data of assorted vegetation and buildings due to relatively lower penetration. 
How we checked the accuracy of the L1 using checkpoints. Different objects have different reflectivity in the laser band, so we evenly arranged seven black and white checkpoints in the measurement area. The white part is the high reflectivity paint, and the black is the low reflectivity paint. Use the GRTK 2.0 mobile station to accurately measure the plane and elevation coordinates of the inspection point and compare the coordinates of the point cloud in DJI Terra to verify the plane and the elevation accuracy of L1. To post-process the collected data, create a new task in DJI Terra, select the task tab as LiDAR point cloud processing, and then import data. You can now start post-processing, import your 3D point cloud data into a third-party point cloud analysis software and automatically generate topographic maps. How accurate is the point cloud? In DJI Terra, we first use the visible light display to find the checkpoint location and then use the reflectancy display to measure the coordinates of the center point of the checkpoint and compare the coordinates obtained on the point cloud with the coordinates measured using RTK, and then the accuracy of the checkpoint can be obtained. This time, the air in the plane of the checkpoint is six centimeter, and the air in the elevation is around five centimeter. We also use third-party point cloud analysis software to verify elevation accuracy. Take the 3D position of the checkpoint as the center. Take the elevation weighted average of the other points in a certain range around and then calculate the elevation differences between this average value and the RTK measured elevation value. So what about the thickness of the L1 point cloud? We choose a smooth surface and take a look at the point cloud thickness, which is about 6 cm. So from the test results, the accuracy of L1 can meet high precision topographic surveying and mapping. And the point cloud is also very thin. In order to ensure accuracy, please pay attention to the following items during operation. First, select a suitable flight height. The accuracy of the LiDAR point cloud is approximately linear with the detection distance. The accuracy index we gave is a flying height of 50 meters a plane accuracy of 10 cm and an elevation accuracy of 5 cm. The accuracy will gradually decrease if it exists this altitude. Terrain surveying and mapping generally have large ups and downs. It is recommended to use terrain follow when collecting data to ensure the same height to the ground. In order to ensure high accuracy in surveying and mapping operations, it is recommended to set a flight height of 50 to 100 meters. Second, perform RMU calibration in L1 surveying and mapping missions by default. Acceleration and deacceleration will be carried out at the beginning and end to correct the RMU system. And there will be acceleration and deacceleration correction routes in the middle of the mission. If it is a manual data collection flight, be sure to remember to fly a acceleration and deacceleration for collecting the data. Third, ensure that the data has a certain degree of overlap. When DJI Terra process L1 data, the point cloud accuracy optimization function can perform strip adjustment on the point cloud in the overlapping area to improve the accuracy of the results. The official recommendation is to set the side overlap to 50% during data collection and to enable point cloud accuracy optimization during data processing. Here are the main application scenarios for the L1 that I will now go into in detail. Surveying and mapping. The survey and mapping the point cloud data obtained by LiDAR is very informative and can provide detailed and accurate geometric descriptions of the shape and form of ground objects. Processing and extracting information from the point clouds can reveal a lot of detail 
results like contour lines, digital elevation models, and point cloud classifications that users will find useful. Using the point cloud data processed by DJI Terra, including data from several rendering modes like visible light, reflectivity, height, and return, you can clearly see key elements such as houses, roads, trees, farmland, and even telephone poles. By combining DJI Terra results of the post-processing with third-party LiDAR post-processing software, we are able to achieve one click, no parameter processing of the output point cloud results. By classifying the point cloud data, we are able to differentiate between ground, buildings, trees, etc. Calculate the location, height, and the shape of the building, and extract the location, height, and crown diameter of the trees in the survey area, etc. And even the total number of the trees. And the high density point cloud can generate a digital surface model by classifying the ground points and non-ground points in the point cloud. A digital elevation model can then be generated with contour lines, cross section lines, and other information. Energy inspection. So what about energy inspection? For electric power, it has been challenging to use photogrammetry to reconstruct 3D data of poles and towers or small objects such as wires and insulators. LiDAR can solve this problem. The use of airborne LiDAR in the power grid focuses on this aspect. 3D reconstruction of electrical towers, 3D visualization of the line corridors, tree barriers analysis, wear measurement, wear seg, icing, wind deviation, and inspection road planning as well. Forestry. So what about forestry? Forest resources investigation and analysis are the key tasks of the forestry department. And scanning the forest floor is sometimes difficult. In the lighter forest location, cloud results, the topographic information about forest floor as well as location, height, and canopy of the single tree can be obtained at the same time. The diameter crown volume estimated trunk diameter and volume information can dynamically monitor the growth of plants. After removing the trees, we can obtain accurate terrain data, including digital elevation models and contour lines. Let's move to the disaster management. The R1 can also be used for natural resources management, natural disaster response, and water area measurement. By classifying the point cloud of the river channel, we obtain an accurate digital elevation model of the river channel to assist the water conservation departments with making water volume estimation, flood inundation analysis, and other related decisions. L1 has a three-axis stabilized gimbal that can collect data on slopes, for example, in Mountain Geological Disaster Survey, using the three-axis stabilized gimbal to adjust the angle of L1 can collect high-precision point cloud data on the slope of the mountain, and then perform disaster analysis. From the point cloud data, we can see whether the protection project needs to be reinforced. Like from this scan of the landslide above the Heiho River, we can directly analyze the point cloud to check the possible secondary geological disasters. The earthwork of this line slide body can also be calculated, and multiple danger rock bodies can also be identified. So we have talked many different uh, applications and scenarios of using L1, but there are still many other applications of L1 that bring immense benefits to everyday work. I look forward to working with you to bring lighter to more people and meet the needs of many more industries.